While many groups and governments wish to censor the internet, Israel and its partisans are among the most globally significant. They work to promote the Israel narrative while blocking facts about Palestine, the Israel lobby, and other subjects they wish to cover up. Much of this is done by devoted individuals acting independently, voluntarily, and relentlessly. But many of these activists are part of orchestrated, well-funded projects sponsored by the Israeli government and other pro-Israel groups. They utilize Israeli soldiers, students, American teens and seniors, and range from infiltrating Wikipedia to influencing YouTube. As we'll see, some even operate out of Jewish community centers in the US. One such group is the Israeli military's New Media Desk. It is well known nowadays that what happens on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube has great influence on events as they occur on the ground. The internet too is a battleground. It is thus comforting to learn that the IDF employs soldiers who tweet, share, like, and more. Another project initiated in 2011 by the National Union of Israeli Students has the stated goal to deepen and expand Hasbara, or state propaganda activities of students in the state of Israel. Under this program, Israeli students are paid to, quote, lead the battle against hostile websites. The students are tasked with what many would call shilling or trolling in online forums and social media. They're directed to create original content in the form of news reports and blogs, edit Wikipedia, inject pro-Israel messages into discussions on social media, as well as to report and remove what they consider to be allegedly anti-Semitic content. It's important to note that criticism of Israel is not the same thing as anti-Semitism, despite Israel's best efforts to redefine the word. Anti-Zionism is the new anti-Semitism. Anti-Zionism is anti-history, anti-humanity, and anti-Semitic. It's pure anti-Semitism. Let's use our power on social media to educate our society. Now, interestingly, this charity, the International Holocaust Remembrance Association, has also given a number of examples of what sort of behaviour should be called out alongside this, which are actions which seek to stereotype Jewish people, to justify attacking or killing them, claiming that the state of Israel is a racist endeavour or comparing it to Nazi Germany. When there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government. Um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then they are anti-Semitic. Now, I know what they do because I used to ask them to do it. I mean, when I was in the Mossad, and we had a guy that gave us problems in the U.S., and he was speaking out, and he was talking like, like Pete talked once and said, Israel is bombing Lebanon with cluster bombs. We say, hey, who's that guy? You know? And of course, the campaign starts, and before you know it, the guy's labeled. And he's an anti-Semite, because that's what we say he is. Another pro-Israel organization that targets public information on the internet is CAMERA, the Committee for Accuracy in Middle East Reporting in America. A 2008 expose revealed a CAMERA initiative to infiltrate Wikipedia in order to rewrite Palestinian history, pass off crude propaganda as fact, and take over Wikipedia administrative structures to ensure these changes go either undetected or unchallenged. Leaked emails from CAMERA called for volunteers to secretly work on editing Wikipedia entries. They were instructed to, quote, avoid for obvious reasons picking a username that marks you as pro-Israel or that lets people know your real name. The emails emphasized that volunteers were to avoid editing Israel-related articles for a short period of time after signing up as editors to avoid arousing suspicion and to always log in because if you make changes while not logged in, Wikipedia will record your computer's IP address. In 2010, two Israeli groups began offering community workshops on Zionist editing of Wikipedia entries with the aim of making sure that information in the online encyclopedia reflects the worldview of Zionist groups. Moetzet Yesha, in conjunction with My Israel, uh, has arranged an instruction day for wiki editors. The goal of the day is to um, teach people how to edit in Wikipedia, which is the number one source of information today in the world. As a way of example, if someone searches the Gaza flotilla, we want to be there. We want to be the guys who influence what is written there, how it's written, and to ensure that it's balanced and uh, Zionist in nature. 
And again in 2013, there was evidence of pro-Israel tampering with Wikipedia when an employee of an Israeli institute called NGO Monitor edited articles about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in an allegedly biased manner. According to the Israeli newspaper Haaretz, Dreiman concealed the facts that he was an employee of NGO Monitor and that he was using a second username which is forbidden under Wikipedia's rules. In 2017, yet another Israeli project was launched with the intention of controlling discourse and promoting a pro-Israel narrative online. Known as ACT-IL, the project uses a software application that leverages the power of communities to support Israel through organized online activity. The software is a joint venture of Israel's IDC University, the Israeli American Council, and another American group called the Maccabee Task Force, which was created to combat the international boycott of Israel over its human rights abuses, which it terms an anti-Semitic movement. The project is also supported by Israel's Strategic Affairs Ministry and Israel's intelligence community. Its CEO is an eight-year veteran of Israeli army intelligence named Yardin Ben Yosef. Israeli media Ynet News reports that the Israeli military has begun scouring Jewish communities abroad for young computer prodigies to recruit for its ranks. In operations Pillar of Defense and Protective Edge, we set up the first advocacy situation rooms here at IDC. We operated together with hundreds of volunteers who work around the clock for Israel on social media networks. Through the operations, we realized that when many people work together, it is effective. This understanding led IAC and IDC to partner and found ACTAL, the online community for Israel. <laughs> 